I think I heard Kendrick say like, yeah, you know, there's like specific frequencies that create specific uh, vibes and, and, and Ali, like Ali and Ali is the king of like <laughs> pulling out those frequencies to create a specific, you know what I mean? Da, 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 da. And I was like, oh, okay. What other tips? Um, I would say, and in, in from the recording aspect, like pay attention. You're not recording your vocal when you record a mic on a microphone. You're not recording a vocal. You're recording the room with a vocal in it. Um, so I think it's really important to consider that, like mm -hmm. the the other external noises that are occurring in the room. Um, trying to manage that so like what you do with a chaotic eyeball mm -hmm. um i support people using them when they have to mm -hmm. um, i still think a vocal booth is far greater um than a chaotic eyeball mm -hmm. but in but that's because the vocal booth is treated there's there's some treatment happening in there yeah so like our vocal booth for example has a ton of like we have um you know a, a we have a air gap um, a three and a half inch rock fiber insulation, a um, five a sheet rock, then we have an acoustic glue, then we have a half inch sheet rock that's split in half by an acoustic polymer mm -hmm. that um, that dissipates sound through heat, mm -hmm. like sound pressure through heat, mm -hmm. um, and that's just one wall because the vocal booth has two, you know, an external and an internal wall. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you really have double all of those um, those aspects. So mm -hmm. that creates um, an, a very isolated sound that doesn't transfer from room to room. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the like custom acoustic treatment and not a whole lot of foam in there, mm -hmm. um, which kind of helps you to not deaden the room right you don't want to you know the room to be dead you yeah. just you just don't want reflections happening in right. such a way that right. you can hear um all the ricochet of your vocal right you right know what i mean so the environment is huge think that you're recording the room with the vocal in it not just recording a vocal in a room big time so if you need to go get you know like acoustic curtains and create some kind of makeshift you know three walls and a ceiling kind of situation mm -hmm. um whatever it takes to to like kind of create like control the acoustic environment mm -hmm. is going to save you a lot of it's about signal to noise ratio so the more noise you have in the recording mm -hmm. versus the the vocal that you have in the recording that's how that's what makes or breaks the recording yeah yeah that's good that's that i mean that's, that's a that's a that's a lot that's a lot to chew on um yeah, that's yeah, a lot. We can, we, right. <laughs> I love this stuff, man. We could we could just go, right? Um, just go. Someone asked you earlier, and I think I think this is a fun question, and you, you said you had a story about it. You said, um we, someone asked, like, can you even listen to music anymore without turning off your mixer ears? And you said you had a really interesting encounter at the doctors. Yeah. <laughs> uh to talk about that. <coughs> so Man, this is this is I love this story. So, um, I had noticed that I was having a hard time hearing people in crowds. Hmm. Um, so I I found that if I was in a densely populated environment of people, mm -hmm. I would really have a hard time. Like I'd have to really focus to listen to somebody talking, mm -hmm. which I'd never really had that issue before. Hmm. Um, so I got concerned because the, the amount of focus it was taking for me to listen to people in a conversation, mm -hmm. and I like being an active listener, mm -hmm. um, it was making me really worried. Mm -hmm. Like, because I would have to almost lean into the person to have a discussion. Wow. Um, so I got concerned, and I went and did um, an air exam with a specialist, mm -hmm. and um, so they asked me a bunch of questions beforehand, and I told them, you know, well, and on top of that concern, mm -hmm. I'm also, I also hear differently between my left ear and my right ear. Hmm. Um, so he said, well, you know, what do you mean? So I told him the frequencies mm -hmm. um, that I hear differently in between my left and right ear. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, oh, okay, that's interesting, okay, cool. So we did we did the exam and the doctor came back out and sat down <laughs> and sat down and um, he said, what do you say you do again? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm, a, I'm an audio engineer. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, man, your hearing's not like um, deteriorating. Your hearing is probably improving. Hmm. 
he said the the difference between the way your left ear and your right ear hears mm -hmm. is less than one percent. Hmm. And he said to he said you you are hearing it so accurately mm -hmm. that you're almost hearing as well as our machines are hearing are measuring your hearing. Crazy. Um, so he said the only way that you could get more feedback mm -hmm. about the difference inside of that one person like that less than one percent mm -hmm. would for you be for you to go to an entire facility that does nothing but hearing hmm. wow you know and that blew my mind and so what was happening um i ran across some some stuff by on the internet that i read what was happening is anything that you do as a human being mm -hmm. Um, constantly, mm -hmm. your brain starts to rewire itself right. for that thing. Right. And so what was happening was I was mixing in an acoustic environment so much that it was creating anxiety because when I was out, I could hear too many things at once. <laughs> That's wild. And I, and I literally am listening to multiple conversations at the same time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. I can't turn it off. Wow. But in, re it, in real life, I couldn't do it, but when I'm in the studio, I can always turn things up or down or right. alter the frequencies right. or the spatial feel right. um, to be able to make all those things audible simultaneously and mm -hmm. cohesively. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't do that inside of a restaurant. Mm. Um, so it was literally creating anxiety That's because my crazy. brain could not slow down. Wow. Yeah. Do you, uh, I'm assuming you, because you care about your hearing, you're probably mixing quieter than most people and rappers listen to their music. A hundred percent. That's another thing about the difference between the producer ear and the engineer's ear is that when you're a producer, in order to create feeling, you're going to listen to your music loud. It's mm -hmm. just what it is, mm -hmm. um, especially because you're trying to create motivation for an artist mm -hmm. to feel that emotion. So you're mm -hmm. going to crank that system. So you're right. constantly beating your ears up. So your ears can't be as accurate mm -hmm. as an engineer's ears because they are dealing with too much um, abuse. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's just yeah. an, it, it, I'm not, I mean, I'm speaking in generalities, but mm. you really, you really can't. And you're, you know, over time, there's a compound effect, especially as you age yeah. when it comes to sound and, and hearing and all human beings hear differently. Sure. Right. So not, there is, we have a, we can measure that there is a general way that all humans hear, but mm -hmm. the, the difference between your hearing and my hearing right. is a real thing. Right. Um, and that's across the, you know, all of humanity. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I definitely don't, I listen to music loud because there's a, um, the way the brain perceives sound at one volume is different than another. Mm -hmm. So a hi-hat will feel like it's inside of a mix at a specific volume mm -hmm. when it's low, and it'll feel completely different when it's loud. Right. Um, so I have to listen to both, you know. Right, you're going back and forth, and yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, you just kind of return. You, I mix at a baseline frequency, like uh, volume, yeah. and then I, I visit going up in volume, but I come back home to that same volume that I started at, and yeah. I execute the mix across that whole entire thing. And it's just every once in a while just yeah. checking at a larger, uh, higher um, volumes. That's dope. Um, what do you think about, um, you know, I'll, I'll look up like uh, meditative frequencies, mm -hmm. and it would be like, you know, I forgot the four. 50 something 456 like this frequency the scale uh sounds really good and it creates this energy but yeah. if you go to a lower frequency it creates a different energy and i remember when i was with my buddy at aftermath he kept telling me to like yo like go in and boost like between 450 and 500 in your vocals you have a cool like there's a cool like throatness to your to your vocal i agree yeah. try try boosting those frequencies and i started doing it and then a while later I discovered that there's these like meditative frequencies that make you feel more relaxed and it's in that 450 to 500 and apparently you know a lot of musicians or engineers um, like I know Kendrick and Ali have like alluded to it that they're essentially mixing to create a specific vibration in a person and they're accentuating specific frequencies what do you think what do you think of that like are you that intentional with it or do you think that some of that's kind of like eh it's it's it's, it's not um, as accurate you know what i mean like because i do feel like there are frequencies that create ear fatigue you know so absolutely. like with my voice 2.4 k definitely like there's that highness in my voice that like 
I have to keep that contained with a, I'll put a de on it and contain like a very narrow frequency right at 2.4K or sometimes I'll do a little bit of EQ and then add a de at just at that frequency on top of a normal de -esser. So I do feel like there's frequencies that create ear fatigue and make a song harder to listen to. That's why I think the issue with Chance's record was like those higher, uh, when he goes into the, you know, the real animated rap style, I think that creates ear fatigue, pe pe which creates less replay value. Right. The flip side of that is, do you think there are frequencies that can create more replay value? Um, and, 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 and a better feeling with the music. Um, the, the music puts out a better vibe. Yeah, te I think technically there are. Uh -huh. um, and, and Ali's never said that um, to me personally, so I don't know that that's what they I think I heard do. Kendrick say like, yeah, you know, there's like specific frequencies that create specific uh, vibes and, da -da -da. and, and Ali, like Ali, Ali is the king of like <laughs> pulling out those frequencies to create a specific, you know what I mean? Da -da -da -da. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, and then I, got, I recently I got into all these different meditative frequencies right. on YouTube and stuff like that. Well, see, those frequencies are typically... Um, Here's a, way, a great way of saying it. Inside of rap music, those frequencies are typically not going to hold a lot of weight. Mm. Um, and the reason why is because mixing is about balance. Mm -hmm. And the way that you perceive those frequencies is going to be modified by the other frequencies that are happening against those frequencies. Mm. Okay. Right, so unless it's a very clear, unless that particular instrument or or sound has a very direct and and clear space to live in inside the song, mm -hmm. it's probably not going to be as impactful. Now, when there's just instrumentation, it's a mm -hmm. lot easier to do mm -hmm. um, because the the human ear, like you said, two point four k, two point four k, is one of the most dominant frequencies for the human voice in general mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right so that's a whole thing um so it, it's it makes it tricky when you're dsing that kind of frequency range yeah. because it that's a very meaty part of a vocal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and it's it's really important that that be still present mm -hmm. so you want to balance like you should be doing dsing with in that frequency range in order to balance the vocal mm -hmm. or Stabilize is mm -hmm. a better word to yeah. stabilize the vocal, yeah. and then raise it back up. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's I mean? literally what I do. Is I'll contain like the two point four k in mind, and then I'll have uh, and kind of like a it's like a Neve emulator that'll add at like three k to kind of create more. See, three k is dangerous, okay, because three and five k, um, particularly like three. I don't know, maybe maybe like three to. 3.4k and mm -hmm. then like 4.4 to high 5k mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of really harsh frequencies in those areas that mm -hmm. the human ear does not I don't care who you are mm -hmm. it does not like those frequencies mm. um, and so that's the replay value thing that you were talking yeah. about when those frequencies are really heavy it tends to become the record tends to become harsh and feel distorted yeah and then when you um, when you put a limiter or a mastering chain mm -hmm. on a record it's mm -hmm. going to dramatically impact the volume of the it's going to make it stand out even more mm. so suppressing those frequencies and stabilizing them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, suppre suppressing to stabilize is a better way of saying that suppressing those frequencies in order to stabilize them mm -hmm. so that they can be present because mm -hmm. your ears are so sensitive to those frequencies that mm -hmm. if they're not present enough mm -hmm. it's counterintuitive to the human ear yeah that's good that's good that's good I just I just learned something I'm from Atlanta, you throw me the ball and I scoop in the zone They hit me up for a deal like it's something I do on the phone Just cause it's me in the studio don't mean I do it alone Julio, 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 Jul